G'day, this is Captain Uber. This is the prototype Gorse Rifle, not to be confused with the Gorse Rifle prototype offered by the Creation Club. Get out of here. Anyways, this is a somewhat customizable standalone Gorse Rifle type weapon, obviously, with some War Daddy animations that we saw months and months back at this point. But yeah, it's nice to actually see them available to the wider public in a Nexus mod. So we'll get right into the attachments. Nothing to do with the receivers here, so we'll move on. And you can increase the damage and the fire rate and the range by adding the capacitor boosting coil probably will increase our ammo count in our magazines if it's the same sort of modification as the vanilla gorse rifle we can only hope we can chuck on a sock if we feel like it recoil compensating stock will help us reel it in and you can attach some optics right now i've got no sights here standard sights you can chuck on a tiny little reflex sight there which seems unusable but you can see through it fairly nicely um this particular scope here isn't actually textured so i don't want to use that we'll just chuck on a long scope for this and that'll increase our accuracy somewhat now you can actually change the element of this thing, and I do say that in inverted commas because it's not really an element, it's just how your projectiles work and the color of this particular um, pipe section here. So right now we've got the gorse adapter, it'll fire the gorse rifle bullets like you see out of the vanilla gorse rifle. You can have plasma, red laser, and institute laser. You will actually require an institute laser gun to actually get that to work, which is interesting. But it does give you 540 damage, which is uh, incredibly advantageous. So what I want to do is check out this weapon with all of its different elements, and I'll see you where we always test our weapons. Righto, so here we are in Gunners Plaza with our prototype Gorse weapon rifle thingy. That's what it looks like in first person. Just got a basic long scope there, nothing to worry about there. Can hold your breath like usual. I'd like to point out this weapon does have glow maps on its little pipes, although this one is the standard Gorse rifle type, and I'm not really sure why there are green pipes there. I feel like blue pipes would make a little bit more sense. And taking a look at this weapon in third person, the models and textures look absolutely great. And as you can tell there, we've got some custom animations as your uh, character there is not holding it in a vanilla position, uh, just under that mag guarder there or whatever it's called. So yeah, um, off to a good start with this weapon. It's, its aesthetics are definitely top notch. So let's get started on actually shooting people. So getting those sneak attack crits first is a good thing. And uh, what we can do is get those headshots pretty frequently. This thing is unsuppressed though, which is not really advantageous. But um, as you can tell, we get the sniper perk happening for us, which is useful for stopping enemies in their tracks. Now, I don't have to charge this thing up, unlike the regular vanilla gorse rifle, so that allows me to get a lot more shots off, which does synergize it a little bit more with sniper more effectively, because the volume of shots would be a little bit higher. Also, I forgot to put the charger in my computer. Okay, there we go. So, yeah, if you've, uh, finding that my voice is a little bit off, probably because I've sort of half lost my voice, because I was at the AFL Grand Final, not in the actual MCG where it was played, just at the Holden Center where the Collingwood boys are. Unfortunately, the Pies lost. Um, I wonder if that's actually anyone in the Americans actually saw that gameplay, because they actually broadcast that game in America sometimes. As you can tell, the rate of fire is actually pretty good too, so you can stack on that DPS pretty well. We'll switch over to this one. This one, I believe, is the plasma, which does penalize you in rate of fire. And also, um, we don't get a uh, projectile that is hit scan anymore, which is a um, little bit problematic for targets at range. But we're in Gunners Plaza now, so we probably won't have to worry about that. Um, although the projectile is a big physical um, entity, so it does sometimes get in the way of doors and stuff like that. And what better time to test this thing out in vats with Captain Bridget around the corner. We'll go for a critical here, see how we do. Ooh. 1100 damage on that critical, that's some power there. So yeah, this thing is definitely ticking the boxes in terms of power. Definitely a high tier weapon. Um, is it overpowered? I'll let you decide, but definitely not for this one. I'm th I'm not really digging the plasma one, but the laser one, we'll see how that goes if you were to hold still for a second. We do get a slightly higher rate of fire of this, which helps also. It would also help if um, that gunner captain there didn't pick up Bridget's gun. Let me just uh, go and pick that off you. Nice. Yoink. Okay, now I can back off a little bit. A little bit um, Rambo style there. We'll just back off a little bit just to shake the heat. 
I'm trying to play a little bit more cautiously because the next weapon I do, or I'm planning to do, is going to be on the modern firearms mod. And if I run in charging like that when they arm um, with those guns, then I'll be in a lot of trouble. So we can almost one-shot legendary gunners with a critical there, which is nice. We'll switch over to the powerful... <laughs> Uh, Institute blue laser there, which is a nice glowing blue. So maybe that's why um, this weapon uh, only glows blue with the Institute one. Had a little bit of trouble finding the right Institute pistol to actually create this thing. And <laughs> look at this turret trying to shoot me. Uh, the picture frame was in the way. Too bad it couldn't damage itself. Also, this is the max scope. It's basically just a recon scope, untextured there. So uh, that's something for the mod authors to um, fix up by next update, but I don't think it takes away too much. One of the players in the Collingwood team is actually American. His name is Mason Cox. He's a big, big tall bloke in the forward line. It was pretty good because whenever he marked the ball, everyone in the would be cheering, USA, USA. So yeah, there's actually American playing in the AFL now, which um, some of you American viewers might be a little bit more interested in that because of that. He's from Texas, the Great South. Um, not sure what people think of that place, but it's one of the more notorious um, states there. Okay, we'll switch back over to our Gorse one now, and we'll finish off old mate last gunner here. There we go, knocked him down with Sniper. Might as well charge it, get a little bit, bit of hip fire action here, which um, the accuracy isn't too bad. And there's that reload animation courtesy of War Daddy there, and that does actually work in uh, third person. So I already shot this turret, so I'll make sure it's dead. So there you go, the reload animation works in third person too, which is very, very good. So yes, this weapon seems to be um, destroying stuff, but it doesn't really feel overpowered, which is nice. We'll move on to some other beasts and monsters. It's pretty bloody cold in terms of Australian cold where I am right now, and the catch of that is I'm actually getting pretty good performance right now so maybe that's why my aim has been okay throughout this video but what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the gauntlet here this is the again the Institute blue laser one with our recon scope which is untextured but what we can do is uh, take out these Raiders nice and easily there now in terms of uh, extra customization, I don't think um, more damage on the receivers is going to benefit this thing. I actually think its damage is fine already. And if you are playing on the lesser difficulties, you'll find this thing to be maybe even overpowered on that. So maybe with the receivers, you could maybe add an automatic one. You could probably go for one that enhances critical damage as well, which uh, could be useful. Also, I'll pick up that mine so it stops spoofing my... Um, ooh, that... Dusky Yago, I just finished off uh, a Super Mutant Warlord, which is actually quite impressive. Although those things do cause quite a stagger and they hit pretty hard. They don't like to pause between the hits like Death Claws do. Um, so that's probably why you can find that the Yago actually defeat Death Claws, because they don't stand around dancing and roaring when they hit stuff. Okay, some definite good damage on these particular super mutants. Um, we might get into the spot of danger pretty soon, but uh, I think uh, Gerald's over there pissing off the local gunner population. But we've already slayed enough gunners today, so we'll let um, old mate Gerald do his stuff there. Without the sneak attack criticals, we are suffering a little bit in damage, and we will definitely not get them now that we are detected. But hopefully more will be drawn out. I think it's only the one in this room who's actually on the ball right now. So uh, if you were to just peek your head a little bit, hopefully Vats can detect him, and then we can get a cheeky little shot with Penetrator Perk. Okay, we're back in the caution. Oh, let's stay out of that. We're doing this all... Oh, Stealthy and quiet like with a very loud gorse weapon indeed Might as well take that or oh, we didn't actually kill him Did we hit him? I'm not really sure. Okay, we are in danger now. Let's test out this thing's range capability So we're not going to get the best uh, bats usage out of this thing obviously with a scope, but okay That was interesting that I'm sure someone out there would like that Hey, did you read that Fortnite thing where one of the developers put um, jiggle physics into one of the character skins boobies and people were going apeshit about it? Man, I'd be fucked if people reacted like that to the way uh, that I 
create my characters. I think the only one who doesn't have it is Rain, I think. And that's probably because her um, mesh has a little bit of glitchiness in it, because I had to make it double-sided, which screws with the textures a little bit. So that's why I haven't done it. Although I could probably clean up the textures and do it, but that's just too much effort. I think Rain's a little bit too much on that um, booby side anyway, to be honest. But oh well. Hashtag Captain Noob's sexist. He objectifies women. These women don't actually exist, but he's objectifying them, and he's, um, he's really problematic. Oh, Mysterious Stranger is showing up. There we go. I'll just let him finish us off. We'll save some action points there and gain a kill. Okay, it's taking a little bit more time than expected to um, finish off these Super Mutants, considering the um, ease we were able to drop these guys the first time. But yes, these are Super Mutant Warlords, which means, yeah, these guys mean business. So the fact that we can three-shot them like that in very quick succession in bats is, um, yeah, it feels really balanced, this thing, which is actually really good because uh, um, balancing Spineless as I've human. discovered is really hard because I always make all of my mods super overpowered and cheaty and I just really struggle to find that balance between overpoweredness and complete underpoweredness but um whatever that's what patches are for right okay we'll see if we can get some more action out of our plasma one even though it's probably my least favorite this one's only a skirmisher and of course I'll be a doggo yeah, gonna splatter your brains. I th I'm pretty sure they said that in Fallout 3, but it was a little bit different. Also, I've been watching a Skyrim playthrough, and I think, and it just seems that um, the voice actor for the Dramora dudes is basically the same as the Super Mutants. Basically, I think it's just the same voice direction. They just add some sort of effect on top of it to make it sound like it is. But yeah, that's interesting. But there's the cutting corners as usual. Let's get some crits here on big old Gerald. Ooh, 2400 damage. A good start there. Probably not going to do as well now without those sneak attack criticals. We still got um, over 1k damage there, which is great. And what we'll do now is panic fire as much as we can. And hope we can get some sort of sniper bonus on him. Not happening. He's coming in for a big old swing. So what we'll do is we'll try to hit him some more. Nope, we're off to a bad start. Start running. Don't stop. Okay, we actually managed to get away there. We can easily outpath him in the scrapyard here because he will not allow himself to actually go over there. Unfortunately, we're going to have to wait until AP comes back to get more criticals going. We might as well go for the most damaging of our weapons, so we'll go for some criticals with this. Almost 1k damage there with a crit to the face, which is pretty good. But I'm um, probably going to have to deal with all of those dudes over there. Although, I could probably exploit their damage that they're doing to me to get some nerd rage going, which would be highly advantageous. But what I want to do is probably get my AP bar full before I even decide to do that. Seeing the weapon's damage falter a little bit at range here, but that's okay. And yeah, not really too great at crowd control, this weapon doesn't appear to be. A little bit of the range drop-off is screwing me over too, but that's okay. We can easily finish these Super Mutants off kind of easily. So, maybe automatic receivers would be good for this, and maybe some receivers to boost the rate of fire in semi-auto mode would be interesting. Maybe at the cost of damage, or maybe crit boosting receivers like you'd see in the vanilla game, or some really solid um, DPS receivers that add lots of burny damage or something like that to supplement your weapon damage as more of a um, thing. Although the rate of fire generally doesn't actually support that, so maybe you want to um, give it a high damage or high DRT. Okay, we're into Nerd Rage now, which is probably not the best time for it because we haven't actually targeted... Uh, I was about to call him Swan, but that's not his name. That's Gerald. So what we'll do is we'll pray for some hits there. Not quite close enough. That's okay. We've still got all of this slow time to use up. And man, we are definitely just not doing that damage there. Alright, we might need to bring some chems into the equation just to speed this up a bit. That being said, we're in caution. And he's standing all the way over there. So there we go. Some cheeky sneak crits will do us very well. We're going to keep on hitting him with sneak crits. 
Okay, now he's just a target dummy. Something's blinding me though. Is that the muzzle flash that's blinding me? Sometimes with lighting effects, um, it actually blinds you a little bit, so everything seems to go super dark. Maybe it's because it's um, the day is dawning. Okay, we'll get that crit going as soon as we can. Still in caution here, which is good news. We'll just finish him off with uh, the last on this. Oh, running a little bit lower on the um, ECPs. No, not the ECPs, the 2mm ECs here, but we'll be able to take him out in an easy matter of time. Oh, back into danger here, which kind of sucks. He's managed to see me despite having his eyes stuck in some sort of uh, coolant refueling station there. And he's finally out of his limbo of, uh, what's it called? Sniper knockdown effect. Back down you go, mate. If we were crouching that whole time, we might have actually got away and gone back into caution through that. But with the sniper effect giving us a little bit more accuracy per shot to headshots, we might be able to finish him off in this Vats run. Not quite, but there we go. So without the suppressor, you will struggle a little bit in damage when you're fighting against stuff like super mutant warlords where you can't constantly snack, stack sneak attack criticals and obviously that is magnified for a boss which um, you'll never be encountering in the main game but you know I like to test on these guys to see the limits of the particular weapons but we did suffer a little bit there but all in all I'd like to think this is a pretty balanced weapon all up so yeah if you'd like to see this thing in your game and it's been a while coming I'm not sure how long um, this thing was a private mod that um, was around before it was actually um, released to the public. But yeah, it's uh, now here, and I hope uh, it's on a PC and con I hope it's on console too, so you guys can grab it if you're playing on the Xbox. Links will be in the description. Fingers crossed that they are. Thank you for watching, guys.